Oh, this is gonna be exciting. I mean, I had to bring out the heavy guns for this. I got my special guest, Pam, my wife with me. And of course, we always wanna welcome God's precious messenger, the Holy Spirit on assignment. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have Holy Spirit on assignment here to teach us, help us, to advocate for us, to unfold your words in our lives and give us help. Lord, we receive the comfort ministry of the precious Holy Spirit on this series. In Jesus' name, amen. Pam, this has been such a good series. Don't give up. And we're on number four. I had to crescendo and bring you on just to keep things moving up, keep the energy high, right? <laughs> well, I've I've had a lot of opportunities to give up in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't give up. But I don't. I, sometimes I've laughed at you. I said, sometimes I feel like I'm the whack-a-mole, you know, at Chuck E. Cheese's where they, <laughs> they hit the, hit the they, they pop up in another place. So I, so I have up. I have a specialist on hand here for Don't Give Up Part 4. Look, we are living in a very unique time in history. Access to mass information is universal. It's easy. It's common. And yet knowing Wisdom is increasingly rare, foreign, and even dangerous to some institutions. The more confused society becomes about the basics, it seems that increasingly people are believing we are now in the end times. Catastrophic thinking is becoming more common and less and less people are feeling safe. Pam, one time I saw this poster walking along and it said this, one day things will get better until then, Here's a drawing of a cat. And it had actually <laughs> a little stick drawing of a cat. Sometimes that's all it takes. Right, that's right. There is good news though. I mean, authentic good news. In fact, there's great news. Don't give up. Don't you give in. Psalm 121 tells us, lift our eyes to where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's a lot of expert help right on time. So listen to the theme of this message don't give up. Are you concerned about enemies? Maybe you're thinking about enemies right now. Enemies such as sickness and disease, poverty and lack. God is an enemy to your enemies. Psalm 35 verse 1 says that God fights against those who fight against you. So don't give up. You are in this exciting time in history by design for a purpose. God wants to show off his glory in your life. Even your problems can be an opportunity for God to light up the sky and show the world his wonderful goodness. Praise be unto God. Maybe your heart has been beating you up lately. That's right. Maybe you feel like you've been made so, you've made so many mistakes that you're disqualified from hope or from a future. God's mercy and his redeeming plan. My friend, we've all fallen. We've all sinned, broken God's law. We all need a savior. Romans 3, 23 says this, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But thank God it doesn't stop there. Mm. You've got to read on because today there's something amazing that can happen in your life. That's right. Today is a new day for you. If you read Romans 3, 24, it says, but by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right through him, through Jesus Christ, who sets us free. Did you hear that? All are put right through Jesus Christ. How? By the free gift of God's grace. Oh, I love that, Pam. Mark Twain once said this, a clear conscience is a sure sign of a bad memory. <laughs> Mark Twain, Mr. Twain was of course being cynical about our own self-righteousness, lying to yourself. You see, without the price being paid, we can't have a clear conscience. You can fake it, but that's just self-deception. Or as old Barney would say, Pam, you're falsifying. I don't believe it. You're falsifying, right? <laughs> Did you know that God says in Hebrews 8 verse 12 that he will forgive our iniquities and remember our sins no more? God doesn't forget as some misquote that truth. Forgetting is a failure to remember. God does not have a memory problem, folks but he makes a conscious choice of kindness and mercy to remember our sins no more. When I was a kid, I used to hope that my mom would forget that she would just, that she was gonna punish me when we got home. I had been disobedient and I had a punishment coming, but I was hopeful to defer the judgment by the old adage that time heals everything. 
What a fat lie. I would try and distract her on the ride home. Hey, mom, look at that. Hey, is, is that a new building over there? That's really nice. What's that all about? What do you think about the Middle East, mom? Will we ever have peace in that part of the world again? Mom, <laughs> I've told you, have I told you lately what a great mom you are? Say things like this. She would just answer evenly. No tell in her expression at all. I would begin to delude myself that my guilt was forgotten. Time and distance had washed my crimes away. We got home and I was feeling relief like I had cheated judgment until out of nowhere I heard, Stephen, please come to the kitchen. We need to talk. Which meant I was about to get what I deserved, a good old fashioned spanking. <laughs> uh, you know, you can have a guilt-free conscience with a Romans 324 life. If we take the free gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ, we all need forgiveness. We all need forgiveness. So don't believe that that lie that says time heals everything. That's just a lie. And too many people buy into that lie and they have a terminal case of, of soul infection. You know, what doesn't get put right simply gets repeated, and usually at a metastatic level. If you read in Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary, and to him who has no might, he increases their strength and he multiplies and makes it to abound. Even you shall faint and be weary and the young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect and look for and hope in him shall change and renew their strength and power. And they shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles mount up. And just as the sun shines on them, and they shall not be weary, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint, and they will not become tired. Listen to this parable Jesus tells us specifically to encourage his followers to never give up. Jesus doesn't want us rolling over and giving up. He told us with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. So don't give up. Don't give up on God's justice for you. Don't give up on God's plans for you. Don't give up on God's healings for you. Don't give up for God's mercy for you. His answers are new every day, so don't give up. You know, in Luke 18, 1 through 8, it says, Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they had always to pray and not to give up, not to faint, lose heart, or not to give up. He said in a certain city, there was a judge who neither reverenced or feared God, nor respected or considered man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, protect and defend me and give me justice against my adversary. And for a time he would not, but later said to himself, though I have neither reverence or fear of God, no respect or consideration for man. Yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will defend and protect an adventure, lest she give me intolerable annoyance and wear me out by her continual coming, or at last she come and rail on me and assault me or strangle me. <laughs> <laughs> then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not our just God defend, protect, and avenge his elect, his chosen one, who cry out to him day and night? Will he defer to them and delay help on their behalf? I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith on the earth? Oh, that was so good, Pam. Man, oh, and he's, he, he was like he was an ungodly judge, but he was like, just because he said, I don't want to get strangled. I'm going to give her what she wants. Right. She was persistent. It's your attitude in and through the adversity. Your attitude determines your response in the trial. A faith attitude keeps believing in God and on God, relying, trusting, yes, even leaning on God, because no matter how difficult your circumstance is, 
Don't give up. Right. Don't give up believing in the one who is far bigger than any trial that you're enduring. He's bigger than any question you have. Be persistent mm -hmm. to keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, keep believing. But whatever you do, my friend, don't give up. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It seemed just as one problem was solved, another one soon followed. Her father, who was a chef, took her into the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and he placed each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, guess what he did? He placed a potato in one, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third. And then he let them sit and boil without saying a word to his daughter. The daughter moaned and patiently waited, wondering what's dad doing? And after 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potato out of the pot, placed it in a bowl. He put the boiled eggs out and placed them in a bowl. And then he ladled out the coffee and placed it in a mug, a cup. Turning to her, he asked, what do you see? She goes, potatoes, eggs, and coffee. He said, look closer. Touch the potatoes. She did and noted that they were soft. Then he asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling it out of the shell, she observed that the hard-boiled egg, it was hard. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what does this mean? She asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and the coffee beans had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. But in boiling water, guess what it did? It became soft and weak. The egg was fragile with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. And then guess what happened? The egg became hard. However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After being exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. He said, which are you, dear? Which are you? When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg? or coffee beans. I don't want to be a potato head, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the moral of the story is that things happen to all of us, but we must make a decision on how we react, how we respond. And this is big, listen to this, who we will trust for guidance, help and rest. Oh, my dear friend, sometimes in the midnight hour when the world seems to be on fire and falling apart, you actually have to be able to lay your head down and rest. Where do you find your hiding place? Do you know where to go? Do you know whom to go to? You know, Jesus said this to the weary, the troubled group of people. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. If you're hearing all kinds of demands and religious finger wagging right now and condemnation on your soul, don't, don't accept that. Stop listening to that because you know what? You're listening to the wrong voice. Jesus wants to save you. He doesn't push you. He doesn't push you under the boiling water. He refreshes you. He revives you. He doesn't discourage you. But I love this. He encourages Amen. you. Amen. Pam, he encourages us. Yes. There's a reason why the 23rd Psalm is famous. It's because it's life and uplifting in a world full of challenges. We all need a good shepherd escape from the wolves of mortality, not a reality TV escape or a miracle drug that just turns off your feelings. Don't run from your feelings or you'll never have the power to turn the water into coffee, let alone turning water into wine. Don't practice the massive trend of escapism. That's giving up. Don't give up. Yes, bad things have happened to you. They've happened to me. They've happened to Pam. I'm so sorry that you've been hurt. I wish it never happened to you. I hate, I hate that you've been so discouraged that you feel like giving up. Maybe on your dreams, maybe on your love, maybe on you. I've talked to people who tell me that they know that God is good and he doesn't fail, but they feel like they've given up on themselves and they feel like God has too. You see, the problem is you're looking through the distorted eyes of this world, not through God's eyes. That's so good. We have to look through God's eyes. 
In 2 Corinthians, it says, And all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured to his very own image, in ever-increasing splendor, and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit." Why do I constantly promote you looking into God's word every day? Because of this truth, the Holy Spirit does the work of transforming you in ever increasing splendor from one degree of glory to another, then another, and then another. How? When you truly see yourself reflected in the reality of God's holy word. You become what you gaze at with the Lord's help. Don't forget what we read in Isaiah 40, verse 29. It says, he gives power to the faint and the weary, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Is that you? Think of it. Your weakness, your emptiness qualify you for God's infilling of power and strength. No, don't give up. You finally reached the end of you, and you qualify for all that's true. So don't give up. You need to do like King David did in extreme adversity in the midst of the boiling pot and encourage yourself in the Lord. Here's a quick way to see yourself from God's perspective and practice the don't give up lifestyle. My friend, this is a habit. Pam and I, we do this and it's a lifestyle, a trend that belongs to the immortal. This is for you because you're part of the immortal class. It's from the inspiration of Psalm 23. We say this, just say this. The Lord is my shepherd. I don't want, I don't lack. You make me lay down and rest. God, you lead me beside still and quiet waters. You restore my soul. You lead me on the right paths because of the family name. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't hear or fear any evil because you are with me. Oh, that's good. I love that, Pam. You protect me, Father God. You guide me. Yes, you comfort and console us. You even prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You refresh my mind, my thinking, with your anointing power and your joy. My cup, my cup, even my pot, my cup overflows. Yes, goodness and mercy, unfailing love, follow me all the days of my life. Yay for me. (laughs) Yeah, I can tell. Even when you're going through difficult times, even when your mom's passing away, surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. And chase me and surround me. But you got to say that, right? We will live forever in your family, God, and in your amazing presence forever and ever and ever. You see, now when you talk like that, when your eternal words, when you speak eternal words like words like that, they go across the gate of your lips. Guess what happens? First of all, the same thing that happened to King David, the psalmist. You release courage from heaven into your heart. It's supernatural courage. Secondly, the devil gets terrified. I mean, frightened by these kind of words. He has no defense against that kind of truth. He hates the light, God's light. Thirdly, you take the emphasis off the past and put spiritual energy into the future. You're looking out the front window. You can't change the past, so quit trying. But you can design the future with faith in Almighty God. Faith in Almighty God. And sometimes to not give up, sometimes it can be one little thing. I read recently of a man in California and he wanted to commit suicide and he walked one mile to the bridge and he jumped, but he left a note in his apartment. And in this note, it read, I'm walking one mile to the bridge and I'm jumping. I'm giving up on life. I'm giving up on life. But if one person smiles at me, I will not jump. Obviously not one person smiled at him. If one person would have smiled at him, he wouldn't have jumped. And God wants us to be used to give others that smile. And ultimately, God wants to smile on us. So in the end, what's the point of this don't give up message? See, we live in a world where too many people have abandoned themselves. 
and find their character flaws too ugly, too painful to even face one more day. So we give up on us, our world, our home, our life. But don't give up, my friend. Don't give up, my brother. Don't give up, my sister. God has not abandoned you. Hebrews 11 verse 16 says something very interesting. It says, God is not ashamed to be called your God. That's a pretty big, amazing deal. That's God smiling at you right this very second. God is mighty, but he cannot help you beyond your decision to believe any more than he could have helped Abraham if Abraham decided not to believe. Uh, I'm an old man with an old wife, and I've just decided that I, I, I can't imagine God doing what he said he was going to do, so I'm just giving up. That, that would have been giving up, and God would not have been able to help even Father Abraham. But thank God, that's not how the story went. Yeah. Abraham believed God, and even though natural hope was gone, the Bible says, he hoped by faith for God's promise. Maybe you're wondering, but why the difficulties? Why the hardships? Why the troubles? Surely God can't use that kind of stuff. Yes, he can. Don't give up because something's being born in this pressure. That's right. Just think of Romans, Romans 5. It says, moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Let us exult and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship produce patience and unswerving endurance. And endurance fortitude develops maturity of character, approved faith and tried integrity. And character of this sort produces the habit of joyful and confident hope of eternal salvation. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who God has given to us. Praise God, isn't that good? That's the Holy Spirit helps us. He's been given to us and we're called to joy, Pam, even in the difficulties. Look, character is not just good, it's priceless. That's right. It it's is. the mark of God's original image on the inside of humanity. It's why God is not ashamed to be your God. It's Him in you. Now, you may not think you've got it, but this is why Romans 5 says, suffering, pressure, hardship produce unswerving endurance. You can go to the gym and pray for hours and it will not produce any muscles or cardio endurance, will it? You know that. That's faith without works, we'll say, or corresponding action. Did you hear what Paul wrote the Romans? He said, exalt in troubles knowing the pressure produces patient endurance. Endurance develops mature character. Character produces joyful hope. And this kind of hope never, never disappoints. We've got a lot of disappointed Christians today in the world because they want the soup without the spoon. They want the car without the gas in the tank. They want power without wisdom to know how to use it. They want leadership without character to make it serve its purpose. My friend, don't give up. You need to have endurance, perseverance. Don't give up. I like what uh, Dr. Miles Monroe says, man's greatest ignorance is of himself. <laughs> What's that is because we don't know God's originator, the creator of our design. Oh, that's so yeah. good, Pam. We've been made in his image and the essence of his nature is character. In giving us his image, the genesis of our design, he made us to be people of character. You're made for character. Needing to endure and overcome is not meant to destroy us, but actually pull the character up and out of your design to activation. Right. Of course, we all need the help of God's Holy Spirit in this matter, but that's why Jesus has him on assignment to help you and me right now, to encourage us, to lift us up, to train us, to lead us into all truth, to give us character. That's right. And you know, when we receive Jesus into our heart, God comes and dwells with us. Oh, I like that. And Jesus said, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptations and, and pressures and challenges and even injustices, 
He says, because your faith will work patience. And when that patience has its full work, it will make you perfect, entire. You won't lack anything at all. That's so good. And isn't that what we all want? That's what we all want, Pam, right? Even nature speaks to this process. There are things in nature like seeds that get their destiny unlocked when there's extreme heat or extreme pressure or dirt and a burial. When Christ is in you, the trying of your faith activates destiny in your life. Be cautious that the fire you're praying away isn't the energy that lights up your dreams. Mm -hmm. Be discerning to know if the mountain in front of you needs to be cast in the sea or is it the real estate to build your destiny on? Faith in a trial activates the character of Christ to rise up on the inside of you. A life without character is a life of absolute instability. Every wind, every wave becomes your master. Without character, you fall easily into an underground culture, secret shame living. Thomas Paine once said this. He said, character is much easier kept than recovered. It's so true, but God is invested in Christ's character being shaped on the inside of you. So the reborn you can shine. Yes, God has good things for you. You were made for this moment, my friend. So nobody smiled. God's smiling on you. So you feel dirty. Look, every oak tree starts that way. The character of God on the inside of you says, don't give up. Yes, God loves you. But just like Abraham, you've got to make a decision to believe that. Regardless of what the circumstances say, regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of all natural hope being God, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Life is a million times more than this mortality. In this small window of time, we are training to reign with him for eternity. Don't be so laterally minded that you miss the character of your true heavenly design. You might say, I'm totally out of all hope, Pastor Stephen. That's okay. God has an unlimited supply of unfailing hope just for you. But it'll take you putting your last little bit of faith, your last little grain of faith. Reach out right now with your last priceless grain of faith and pray this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm at the end of me. I need your help now. Come into my heart. You are the Son of God. You died on the cross for me. God raised you up from the grave. You're alive forevermore. Forgive me of all my sin. Help me now, Holy Spirit. Help me to never give up. All in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.